in this morning. I'm going to ask you to stand with me as I read from Psalm chapter 96. This is going to be our call to worship this morning. You are here today because you have a desire to come into the house of the Lord to worship Him. And the psalmist uh, invites us into this place where we can come and to, uh, to yield our hearts and lives to, to Christ in worship, saying this, O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Tell of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations, His marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and beauty are in His sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Bring an offering and come into His courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Tremble before Him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the people with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the field exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. For he comes, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. As the praise team comes this morning, let me just encourage you to go ahead and yield your heart and your life in worship to the Lord, that uh, you would allow Him room to fill everything within your heart, within your soul, that it would reflect in your love and your devotion to Him. And, and even as we sing these songs, sing out this song as a new song this morning, with new uh, devotion, with a new fervency, a new zeal for God's glory and His holiness to be revealed. Sing with us, holy is the Lord, and sing to the King.
Father in heaven, we do raise our voices to sing praises to you. You are our king, our ruler, our shepherd. And Lord, we thank you so much for being our savior. The one who has come and given his life for ours on the cross of Calvary. Dying in our place for the forgiveness of our sins. And rising from the dead in victory. Giving us the hope and assurance of eternal life. And oh God, we thank you for this new life. This abundant life, this eternal life that you have given to us. Lord, I pray that our praise and our worship today would flow from hearts that are full of gratitude, full of joy, and honoring you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we do want to thank you for being here today and uh, welcome you in person or online. I appreciate those who are watching us uh, via Facebook or maybe later in the week on YouTube or our website as well. Hey, don't forget to uh, just let us know who you are. We always want to see who's, you know, who's checking us out and uh, who's tuning in. So give us a, a like or a comment on there. And, uh, it, you know, we've got some empty spots here. And I know that it's because um, a few things. One is that we do have several people who are out sick today. And so we are uh, going to want to pray for them uh, specifically. We have some that are just wanting to kind of you know, lay low for a little bit, too, and not be around crowds because of the uh, increase in cases with COVID, and so we uh, respect those decisions that are made there as well. Hey, Nevea, can you do this, though? Can you show just uh, the ones that are watching at home? I know Loretta always likes to see who is in church, and so uh, just kind of pan the camera around, and everybody can wave to Loretta and everyone else who's uh, watching on Facebook, online, at home, and uh, we want to welcome you in and hope that you uh, feel a part of the uh, worship time together today. So whether you're a person or uh, online, we appreciate you being uh, with us and uh, trust that God will lead you to a place of worship. Well, uh, this is my first Sunday with you this year, so let me officially say Happy New Year to all of you. I was uh, glad that uh, last week we had a chance to go help Tyler and Jordan move into their new apartment down in Springfield, Missouri. So we uh, spent the weekend down there. Hi, Devin. Good to see you again. And uh, were you waving at me or somebody else? It's all right. Whatever. He's, he's just waving. <laughs> Maybe still waving at the camera. Yeah, that's all right. That's cool. <laughs> he's got his pop cat with him this morning. So very good. Anticipating a new brother or sister on the way in the next week or two also. So that's pretty exciting stuff. But anyway, we were glad to be able to take some vacation time uh, last weekend and have Sylvan uh, Knobloch. Uh, he does pronounce the K on that, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so it's kind of weird, but um, uh, I'm grateful for Sylvan being here, uh, filling the pulpit last Sunday, and uh, those who took various leadership positions. But uh, it is good to be back as well. Man, it seems like we're gone just a week. Like we've missed a long time. But uh, anyway, we're glad to be, I'm glad to be back and, uh, with you all here this morning. Uh, just a few of, uh, announcements, so I let you kind of look at that yourself. Um, I don't, did Penny tell you last week how we ended up with the uh, Lottie Moon offering goal? She did not? Okay, well, she is not here this morning either because she was not feeling well. So on her behalf then, I will just announce that we surpassed our goal. I don't know what the final number was, but I know our goal was $2,200. And we went up above and beyond that, so... Um, Amen. Praise God that uh, all of that money, 100%, is going to the mission field internationally to help support uh, missionaries like Deanna Schatz, like Rick and Jill Thompson, and like others who are serving in uh, various places across the globe. So thank you to each of you who gave, gave specifically uh, to the Live in Christmas offering. All right. Well, hey, one other thing that I want to um, uh, make note of, and, and I'm going to ask Amy to then share a word about her group, but uh, if you are not currently involved in a life group or a Sunday school, small group, Bible study of some sort or another, then we would love to invite you to find a group and get connected and get plugged in. Uh, we grow better together, and so we would love for you to find a place where you can grow in relationship with the Lord, but do so in a context of being uh, arm in arm uh, with one another in a small group Bible study. And we have several groups that we'd love to get you plugged into, and we'd love to talk with you about to how you can do that if you have any questions. Uh, one of the groups is our Sunday night ladies group. And so, Amy, go ahead and come forward, and uh, you can share about that. I think we've got a video uh, ready to play on that as well. So our um, 
Sisters in Christ group meets on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. Um, we usually meet in the prayer room. And um, we're going to be starting a new video-based study. It's um, by Priscilla Sher, and it's on Elijah, the, the life of Elijah. So um, we, I just want to invite you all um, to uh, join us. I mean, <laughs> I know it's kind of a ladies' group, but you don't have to be a lady to join us. If you really want to see this video, I will say that you're, you're welcome also. And so... Um, Anyway, it starts at 6 o'clock, and um, it's going to be uh, approximately seven weeks. I say approximately because you know things in the time, in the wintertime, things can happen, and things get canceled sometimes. So um, we're going to be starting next week with the video study, but I will be handing out some books tonight. So um, if you can't come tonight, but you really want to be involved in this study, please um, see me or sign up on the bulletin board so that I can make sure to get you a book. Hey there, I'm Priscilla, and I'm inviting you to join me for a seven-session Bible study on the life of Elijah. He is the career prophet of the Old Testament, and his life and his journey with God teaches us so much about what it looks like to be bold, to be fearless, to have character in the midst of a culture that is increasingly anti-truth and anti-God. operate by the power and the presence and the discernment of the Spirit of God, we should still be able to live in alignment with the promises that our God has declared to us. So just like Elijah, if God said it, then let's proclaim it. And so if you want to live the kind of life, like I do, that invites the fire of God's presence, upon our lives, and I invite you to join me as we study a lot. All right. Well, listen, um, as I mentioned earlier, we, we do have a number of people within our congregation and within our community and, and others that you've seen on your uh, prayer, ta prayer chain text uh, who... Uh, have some serious illnesses or, or issues that uh, we want to pray for this morning, and uh, we're going to do that. But let me ask if there are any of you who have a special prayer need that you just would like to share with your church family this morning that we can uh, be lifting you up in prayer for you. All right, yeah, Patrick. Patrick's family in prayer and his mom, who has just come home from the nursing home uh, recently as well. So uh, pray for them. Thank you. Any others this morning that you would have specifically in mind that we could pray for? Yeah, Ron. mentioned Dustin and Britta earlier. She said that she is, what you say, 11 days out from your due date. So we want to certainly be mindful and praying for her. Things to go well with that. Looking forward to that. 
Anybody else this morning? Or maybe somebody's got a word of praise that you could not wait to get to church and share with your church family this morning about the, something that God has uh, shown you in terms of the, His goodness, His grace, His mercy, a uh, special blessing in some way or another. And you just wanted to give a, a shout out, so to speak, to, to what God is accomplishing in your life. Well, you've seen Doug and Papa's crutches. <laughs> yeah. He started. Okay. Mary's hand and then Amy. Um, I'd like to ask for prayers for my son. He's, he's 40 and he's had, got diagnosed when he was 29 with multiple sclerosis and it, it seems to be affecting him physically and mentally. He's got a, a doctor confirmed to see his doctor and an appointment for an MRI to see if the lesions on his brain are getting worse and he definitely needs your prayers. My cousin, Lisa Hillegas, and she's been on the prayer list uh, quite some time ago. Um, you know, I, I think we might have pulled her off because, you know, I didn't really know where her health situation was at the time, and but uh, I just talked with her recently, and she um, she's not doing well at all. Um, and this past nine months, everything has gone downhill for her. She even has, like, people that are coming in to help her with things. Um, like as if she was elderly and she's my age. So um, so just pray that a miracle will occur in her life um, to heal her body because um, it's not looking very good right now. Anybody else this morning? Well, let's do this. Let's just take some moment, uh, some moments in silent prayer, and just feel free to unload your heart to the Lord. He He can handle it. You've got some burdens. Uh, you've got some struggles. Maybe 2022 has just not uh, been off to a great start for you, but uh, God can handle whatever is on your heart. Cast all your cares upon Him because He cares for you. And then just listen well to hear what He might say.
Father, we thank you for being a shepherd of our souls, uh, one who is our protector, our provider, who promises daily your goodness and your mercy, and then also assures us of the hope that we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We who are in Christ have this assurance of hope in our hearts, and we thank you so much for that. Lord, we know that uh, there are some challenges already in store for many uh, facing uh, 2022 with uh, burdens, sickness, with grief, with uh, all kinds of issues and problems that life just seems to throw our way. And you have not promised us a trouble-free life, but you have promised us your presence. And we thank you for that. And Lord, I pray that we will be people who quickly call upon your name. Lord, that we will be people that uh, take these needs that we've heard even today and those that we've been receiving on the, on the prayer chain, that we'll take them to you, Lord. That we'll lift their names and their needs up before you and, and entrust them into your hands. Because, Lord, we know that there is nothing that is impossible for you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Nothing takes you by surprise. You are a sovereign God. You are a faithful God. You are a loving God. So we thank you for your presence and your power in our lives today. Lord, we thank you for the ways that you have worked, your goodness, and the praises that we've heard here this morning. Lord, some of these needs that we've mentioned, we want to call out to you for today as well. We want to pray, first of all, for those dealing with COVID and other sicknesses here in this season. Lord, I pray for your protection and care over them. And, uh, for Keith Norris and uh, some of his relatives that have dealt with that um, and are dealing with it. Lord, we, we want to hold them up to you. Uh, and Greg and Sherry uh, been struggling as well, health wise. And, and others not here this morning just because they're not feeling well or uh, for whatever reasons. Lord, we, we pray for them. We pray for their health. We pray for their safety and well being. Lord, I pray for Patrick and his family. Thank you for his mom being home, and we want to pray for her continued recovery, and to pray for the family as they uh, mourn over the loss. Uh, Lord, we want to pray for Lisa this morning as well. Lord, would you just uh, hold her up in a way that only you can do, and, uh, and even though the doctors don't know quite what to do, we know that you can do all things, so we pray that you will bring her healing, give her peace in the midst of the struggle. I want to pray for Mary's son, and ask you, God, to do what only you can do for him as well. Lord, strengthen him and heal him. And, uh, Lord, I pray that uh, you just renew his heart, renew his mind, and give him uh, good guidance, good direction. Uh, surround him with good influences, Lord, and uh, just watch over his ways. Father, we want to pray for uh, Dustin and Brenda, too, as they uh, prepare for the arrival of their newborn here in the next week or two. And we just ask you to Give them all the care and the protection and the help and safety that uh, they need during this time. And, uh, we just thank you for the joy that uh, comes with the birth of the newborn baby. Uh, Father, for uh, the other requests, and I can't think of them all right now, but Lord, you know every one of them. We can pray for the children and the schools and the daycares as well, and the parents that are struggling to fill gaps and meet needs and deal with the things that are just happening around. Father, we, we want to pray this. We want to pray for an end to this virus. We, we pray that whatever, whatever you need to accomplish through it, Lord, we were going to trust that your purposes will prevail. But, oh God, our prayer is that you would, you would end this. Of course, we know, Lord, that one day we have this hope that there will be an end to all sickness and all disease and all death, and there will be no more pain and no more mourning, no more tears. As the old order of things passes away, and behold, you make all things new. God, that is the longing of our hearts. We, we long to see it. Lord, keep that, keep that fresh in our hearts to, to keep our eyes fixed on you. And again, I thank you for this gathering time that we can have this morning, Lord, as we have worshipped in song and in prayer and through fellowship. And, and as we've heard your word, Lord, continue to speak your truth to our hearts by the power of your spirit. Do what only you can do so that you get the honor and the glory in all things. For it's in Jesus' name we pray.
You go ahead and stand with me. We're going to give him praise and sing to him for his great faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. <laughs> Is this go? Does it look good? You don't think so? No? Okay. I'll, I think I agree with you. I'll try to make a point of this here in a minute. Remind me, remind me to do that, though, in case I forget. If you have your Bible with you this morning, and I hope you do, we are in the book of Ephesians this morning. And uh, the word renew has been on my heart as I've been thinking about uh, this new year. And so I'm going to start this morning. This will be a, a three-week series, Lord willing, about um, renewing some things in our lives for 2022. And this morning we're going to be talking about worship, renew our worship of God. We'll talk next week uh, about renewing our uh, walk together, growing together, and then renewing our ministry to the community, our outreach 
and mission evangelistic efforts in Petersburg. And so this morning, though, we want to start uh, with worshiping God. And so in Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to pick this up in verse 17. This is totally unfair to the book of Ephesians to just pick a spot in the middle and, uh, and go with it. But that's what I'm going to do, and uh, uh, we'll come back. One of these days, one of these days, I'm going to preach through the entire book of Ephesians in a uh, you know, more systematic uh, way, but uh, for, for today, we're just going to pick a spot out that I hope will lead us to where we need to go. So starting in verse 17, Paul writes to the church of Ephesus, Now this I say, and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous. And have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. What I hope that you will want to see today in your life, not just today, but today be becoming the, a new marker, a new beginning point of a renewal in your spiritual walk, that you will have a vision that your life can be and will be increasingly conformed to the likeness of God. Go ahead and hit that first slide there. Just to say, this is the renewed vision I want for my life, and I hope that you want for your life. That we would become increasingly desiring, delighting, and conforming to Christ. The likeness of God in truth, in righteousness, and in holiness. Listen, it is easy to get stagnant in your Christian life. It's easy to get wayward in your Christian life. It's easy to get complacent and, and off track and, as the old song says, prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Does anybody feel it? We are tempted. We are tried. These, these tests and trials that come our way, if we are not careful, can lead us to becoming discouraged, to becoming uh, even callous, hard-hearted. And, and a hard heart leads to a darkened understanding which leads to ungodly living, we don't want to be there. We want to keep our hearts open to the Lord, fresh, seeking after Him, delighting in Him. And so, uh, so this is the vision that I want, I want for myself and I want for us as a church corporately, is that we would, we would want to know the Lord more and more and grow into His likeness more than we currently are. Do you want that? You probably, you probably would not be here in church this morning if you did not have something of a desire for that. And I just I want to fuel some of that desire within you this morning and let the Holy Spirit do that work through his word. So here's what Paul says in Ephesians. Uh, now, now, if we were doing a, a study of Ephesians, we'd probably you know, be looking at the bigger picture. And let me just give you kind of a, a preview, I guess, of what some of that message in Ephesians would, would more look like. And it would basically be this, that, um, that Paul is saying that God has, has poured out his grace upon you. And he has blessed you beyond imagination in Christ Jesus. You don't even know how blessed you are in Christ. The riches of his goodness and his grace and his love toward you are incredible. They, they are wonderful. It is great. And so therefore, you ought to live like you belong to Christ. You ought to live a holy and righteous life in conformity with his will and his purpose for you. In other words, live like who you are in Jesus. And so that's what he is calling us to do. The first three chapters are essentially the, uh, the here, here's, here's God and all of his goodness. And then chapters 4, 5, and 6 are now like, okay, so now live out your life in a manner worthy of this calling to which you've been called. And here's some examples of how you are to put that into practice. So that's the big picture in Ephesians. And one day, like I said, we'll, we'll walk through that a little bit uh, more carefully. 
But, um, but I want you to now, I just want you to get that vision that your life does not have to continue on the same plateaued or wayward pace in which maybe you found yourself, but you can grow. Listen, no matter where you are in your spiritual journey, you can grow. You can become uh, more like the Lord in knowing Him and in trusting Him with your whole heart, in, in, uh, in loving Him deeply, in obeying Him fully and gladly, just having your joy bound up in this life that He has given to you. You can, you can make steps, you can take those steps even starting today. Well, let me, let me say this. This is kind of a thought that came after, uh, you know, even our Sunday school message this morning was on a similar train here. It's, it's this, that as we seek to worship God, our worship is a response to his revelation of himself. When God reveals his goodness, when he reveals his strength, when he reveals his majesty and his love and his protection and his care over us, it leads us in response to worship. Worship being a, a delightful and glad, uh, loving response to all that God has revealed in all the ways that we respond to Him. As we learn to trust Him and as we learn to love Him and obey Him more. In other words, as we live out this new life in Christ, we are living a life of worshiping God. And so the more that we worship him, the more that we desire to know him. And the more that he reveals to himself, to us, the more that we seek to worship him even more. And it's, and it's a good cycle that just kind of feeds on itself. And God does that work within us, but we have some responsibility in that to seek after him at the same time. All right, I feel like I'm rambling a little bit. I'm going to kind of get back to my outline. I've got, I've got an outline today, believe it or not, so... Uh, that sometimes is a good thing. Hey, let's talk so then just a moment about this righteousness and holiness of God. If that's the vision that we are supposed to be like God in true righteousness and holiness, as it says in verse 24. But what does that look like then? What does God's righteousness and what does God's holiness look like? Well, we could spend a lot of time talking about uh, how to answer those questions. But let me take you first to the book of Deuteronomy in the Old Testament. Go ahead and turn there, if you will, chapter 32. And I'll just read one verse to get, to get a, a start on this anyway for us. We're talking about the, the righteousness of God. It means at least this. Here's what Moses says, Deuteronomy 32, 4. The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. That is a glimpse, just a, a short little snapshot of God's righteousness. Now we can look throughout the, the Bible in various ways and find that amplified, magnified, echoed in, in all kinds of ways. But God is a righteous God. He is a God who does what is right by definition, right? We're on track with that. Everything that God does is right. Now, that doesn't mean that we always understand it perfectly on this side of eternity. Our minds are limited. We're finite. His ways are higher than ours. His thoughts are greater than ours. But all of his ways are right. His work is perfect. It is flawless. He never does anything that is wrong. All his ways are justice. He's a God of faithfulness, a God without iniquity, just and upright is he. All right? Well, that's just a glimpse, again, of his righteousness. What about his holiness? What do you know about God's holiness? God is a holy God. We sang about that already in our, in our praise songs this morning. Holy is this God. Look at Psalm chapter 99 with me for just a moment. Three times in this chapter, in this short chapter, the psalmist declares the holiness of God. And we look at uh, verse 3 with you. Psalm 99, verse 3. Let them praise your great and awesome name, holy, 
is he, verse 5, exalt the Lord our God, worship at his footstool, holy is he, verse 9, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. We, we hear this echoed throughout the, the scriptures. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was as it is and is to come. That is a song that has been sung from days past. It will be a song continued to be sung into eternity future. We will be singing the holiness of God. He is unlike us. He, he is incomparable. There is no rival, no equal. There is none who can compare with him. He is set apart in holiness. And he calls us to be holy as he is holy. He calls us to be righteous, to live our lives in a right way according to his word, his ways. And so that's the vision that I'm trying to understand better myself. And I want to convey to you as well that we are called to conform our lives to the righteousness and holiness of God. Because I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the world in which we live is not a world living in much righteousness or much holiness. It is a wicked and evil generation. Jesus said that about his own generation, and things have not really gotten a whole lot better since then. We are living in dark times. We are living in, in, in a time where this is an adulterous generation. It is a uh, generation who is just willfully uh, blind or ignorant or arrogant to the things of God. It, it's a generation that doesn't want anything to do with God. And it doesn't, not only doesn't like God, but it doesn't like the people that like God. We are we're living we're in, in a time where we're going to face increasing persecution and suffering because of our likeness to God. But that's okay. That's where you want to be. You want to be, no matter what happens on the outside, we want to be people who are living faithfully to the Lord here. So here's what, um, let's go back to Ephesians chapter 4 here, and I'm going to give you three thoughts on how you can renew 2022 as you learn to live this new life and worship God. And the first thing is this, to put off the old. you got to take off the old way of life. Here's what Paul says. As I am saying this, I'm testifying in the Lord, kind of a double listen up, kind of like the truly, truly, verily, verily, I say it to you, I'm saying this, I'm testifying in truth, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. Now the church in Ephesus, well the city of Ephesus, let me say this, was known for its immorality, for its idolatry, for its pagan worship. There was the temple of Diana, which... Um, it was a great and glorious centerpiece in the town, according to all the people there. And, uh, and there was a lot of immorality associated with the worship of uh, the prophetess Diana. Uh, a lot of temple prostitution and, and other forms of cult uh, prostitution, immorality that went along with that, idolatry of all kinds. And uh, so that's, that's kind of a background that a lot of the, the believers who came to know Christ in the city of Ephesus, they came out of that stuff. They, they were like that. They engaged in those kind of behaviors and had those kind of mindsets. But Paul says, but now that you've come to Christ, now that he has called you, now that he has blessed you in Christ, and now that he has shown his, the riches of his grace to you, even though once you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, now that you have received Christ, you must no longer walk like that. Don't live like you used to live anymore. Because if you're in Jesus, then your life has changed. You've been given a new birth. You've been given a new life, a new purpose. Uh, with, with the idea that we will have new attitudes, new thoughts, new desires, new, new ways about us. A new view of life. The Gentiles were futile in their minds, darkened in their understanding. They were alienated from the life of God. They, they didn't have any knowledge of God. And it was due to their hardness of heart. They were callous. They'd given themselves up to sensuality. They were greedy to practice every kind of impurity, as if they just could not get enough of the immorality, the uh, 
idolatry and purity to serve that day, that generation. So Paul says, don't live like that anymore because that's not the way you learned Christ. If indeed you have learned about him, if indeed you've been taught in that way of truth, so you can't live like that any longer. When we come to Christ, we are made new. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. God has done something new in you. You've been born again if you're in Jesus. Hey, listen, as Peter said, you've already spent enough time in the past doing what the pagans choose to do, living in idolatry and debauchery and immorality and, and all that stuff. But don't do it anymore. You, you put that stuff off. You, you got to die to that kind of life. You got to embrace the new instead. All right. So why am I wearing this old sweatshirt, especially with the especially with the new shirt and tie? You know that this is a Christmas gift from Amy. I picked it out along with her, but uh, <laughs> I told you about how I picked up her gifts. But we kind of. But the long story is, I needed a new shirt for the wedding. Anyway, they had this deal in his warehouse. You know, you don't just walk in with getting one shirt. You know, it's like, hey, but if you get three shirts, you get for this price. All right, I'm like, oh. Anyway, point is, I got a new shirt and a new tie. All right, now follow me, and I'm going to see if I can try to make this unknown for you. So this new shirt and the new tie, I'm going to say today, for our purposes, represents the new identity that we have in Christ. All right, it is. We've been made new in Jesus. I've got a new shirt, and it's part of that new life, all right? So why would I want to wear an old, you know, raggedy sweatshirt, the kind of sweatshirt I used to wear, that just doesn't go with the new identity any longer, right? I need to put this kind of stuff off. This, these old ideas, these old values, these old attitudes, these old thoughts, these old words, these old deeds that do not conform any longer to this new life that I have in Jesus. Wear a new shirt and new tie from Men's Warehouse. You don't, you don't put an old raggedy sweatshirt on top of that, right? It just doesn't go good. It doesn't look good. It's not meant to be that way. Your new life in Christ is not meant to be lived in the old patterns in which you used to live. Going out carousing, you know, just partying that scene and, and having thoughts of uh, greed and jealousy and anger and bitterness. It just doesn't look good on you anymore. Not if you've been made new in Christ. Sexual immorality, lust, impurity, sensuality, all that kind of stuff doesn't look good on you if you're in Christ. That's not the way you are called to live. So you got to put off the old, the sinful stuff. And how do you do that? Well, you confess it. And you repent from it. This is not rocket science. You call out to God and you say, oh God, I am sorry that I've lived this way, that I still have some of these same patterns that I see creeping up, and, and I confess that to you, God. We acknowledge, agree with God that these things are wrong, we need to get rid of them, and we repent. Repent means we turn from it. Not only confess it, agree with God, but we turn away from it. Put it, put it down, move away, go a different direction. That's what we are called to do. You know, when we confess our sin, what does the Bible tell us about God and His character? He is faithful and He is just. To do what? Forgive us. And to what? Cleanse us. This is the amazing work that our amazing, merciful God does. He forgives us. Can somebody say amen to that? Yes, amen. He does not hold it against you. He does not bring condemnation upon you for your sins, but he freely forgives and he cleanses. You might have some stains upon your heart and upon your life from patterns of sin that you've been engaged with, even after becoming a, a new creation, a believer. But God is so willing to cleanse you and to wash you as white as snow from all of those things. Confess and repent. All right, so now, he also continues on by saying, you know, so that old stuff that belongs to your former manner of life, it's corrupt, it continues to corrupt you through deceitful desires. If you let it, don't let it, get rid of it, and then to be renewed. So this is number two, go ahead and hit that next one here. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds. And the best way that I can tell you to do this, according to the Bible, is through prayer. 
prayer and scripture. Saturate your life in prayer and scripture. In every way you know how to do so. I'm a, I'm a big fan of what you might call a daily worship time. Some people might call it a quiet time or daily devotions. It doesn't really matter what you call it. As long as you are spending time immersing yourself in relationship with the Lord through prayer and through his word. It's almost as if what we need to do is we, we need to think of it this way. Here's a, here's a visual for you. you know, Pam, maybe you can use this. Maybe I'll, I'll use it. If you could somehow lift the lid on your mind and just take this Bible and just pour in all the contents, right? That's, that's what I want to do. I want to start my day lifting the lid on my mind and just saturating it with the, the Word of God in every possible way so that it filters not just in my mind but down through every fiber of my being, that it controls the, the tongue. Controls the heart, controls the hands, controls the feet, controls everything about me. I just want so much of God's word to saturate me. I wish it was that easy just to lift the lid and, you know. But you got to do the hard work of reading. And not just reading. See, here, here's what I'll say this. A lot of people have a good Bible reading plan, and, and you've got to have a, you got to read the Bible. That's the starting point. But don't stop with just reading the Bible. You can read the Bible and gain nothing from it. And I've done that before. I've read pages of the Bible and I close it and say, I don't remember a thing that I just read. My mind was elsewhere. I was thinking about 12 different things and I don't even remember a single word I read. We need to read with intentionality, read with purpose, read with prayerfulness, read as if we are seeking to hear from heaven. There was a wise woman who once said, this is not reading material, it's listening material. My wife said that one time. I wrote that down because I thought, man, that is profound. This is not just something to check off in a morning devotional time, like check, I did my Bible reading plan today. Hey, well, good for you. That's great. And I'm glad you've got a plan. I, and I'm saying that seriously. You need to have a plan. But if all you do is read so that you can check a box, you've missed the point. We engage in the word because we want to hear from heaven. We want to hear how God is revealing himself to us. We need to, to hear him saying, I am your shepherd. I am your king. I am your ruler. I am there for you. And if I am with you, then none can be against you. And that there is nothing that will ever separate you from my love. And I have called you, and I have chosen you, and you are mine. And when you walk through the fire, I will be there with you. And when you go through the flames, they will not touch you. We need to read the word so that we are hearing how God is revealing himself to us. The Bible says that we are to meditate on the word. One of my favorite psalms in, uh, is Psalm chapter 1. Of course, I love so many of these psalms, but uh, this one tells it just like it is. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in what? The law of the Lord. And on his law he meditates day and night. He has poured it into his heart, into his mind. It has infiltrated every fiber, every pore of his being. He thinks about it. He ponders it. He considers it. He rejoices in it. He, he uh, studies it. it he, he soaks in it. He abides in it. And its truth gives him strength, nourishment, so that he is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields his fruit in season. And its leaf does not fail to bear. In everything that he does, he prospers. He cannot prosper apart from being nourished at the fountain of the word of God. And so we talk about the scripture, but, we, but we've got to have this prayerful reading and meditation of scripture. And meditation is really, I would just say that, is the prayerful reading of the word of God. His word becomes 
is alive to us. We are hearing from him. We're hearing, listening to what he has to say. And then making the application to our life. Lord, is there something I need to know from your word today? And of course the answer is going to be yes, but Lord, tell me what it is I need to know. Tell me, tell me something that I need to know to help me make this decision that is in front of me today. To deal with this relationship. Oh, you want me to forgive? to us and then making the applications into our lives. You can't just leave it at the, the knowledge. It's got to gotta make the application. It will do you no good whatsoever if you just understand more about God, but don't do anything about it. Don't fool yourself. Do not be deceived. You can know a ton of scripture, but if you don't put it into practice through faith and obedience, you will not see transformation in your life. Then finally, you gotta put on the new. You gotta put on the new. Alright, well, this isn't perfectly illustrating this. This is an old coat, but I want you to take it with me today. You gotta put on the new life that you've been given in Christ. And doesn't this this jacket look a lot better with this outfit than that old ragged sweatshirt? This is this is the way life is supposed to, to be lived goes together, right? This new identity that I've been given in Christ, I, I need to put on the outward stuff then of, of living it out. It is an inner transformation that results in an outward conformity, I can't think of a better word, conformity to the likeness of God. True righteousness and <clears throat> holiness. Back in chapter 2 in Ephesians, Paul had already told the church there in Ephesus, 
that you have been saved by grace through faith, not because of anything that you have done. It's his own goodness. It's his own gift, right? But you've been saved by his grace, and you have been created as his workmanship for what? For good works, which he has prepared in advance for you to do. So those good works are like a putting on of this new self. You, you put on this identity. You live it out, in other words. And therefore, then, you will be conformed more closely to the image of Jesus, the likeness of God, true righteousness, true holiness. This is what we are called to do in this new life. Let me give you a passage that Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3, and I'll get it closing here. Because I think this is at the heart of it as much as any, anything, any place else that I've seen. It's impacted my own life, and I hope it does for you as well. So Paul had kind of a lot that he could have boasted about in what he had accomplished, the things that he had done, his heritage, his lineage, and everything else that... Uh, that he could have listed, which he did list here in chapter 3 of Philippians. He said, but then in verse 7, but whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and counted as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. That by any means possible, I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Do you hear the desire, the delight, the just the utter I would be lost to the other things of this world so that I may be found in Christ and in Him alone. That's where the heart of worship comes in. When we live out this new life of Christ, putting on Christ, get rid of the old, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's the battlefield. Only plug into the stuff in your minds, the things that are pleasing to Him. Think about what is good, what is right, what is holy, what is true, what is admirable, what is lovely, what is excellent. Pour those things into your mind. Get rid of the negative. Get rid of the sinful. Get rid of the selfish. Put that all to death. And put on the new life of Christ. You can be renewed in 2022. No matter where you're at today, just start where you're at. Maybe you're not where you want to be. That's okay. You can have a fresh start today. Every day can be a fresh start to a new obedience to Christ. New opportunity to trust Him, to love Him, to obey Him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do want to thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We know that in you there is pardon for sin. And there is a hope that endures. So God, today I pray that we will find pardon for sin as we confess our shortcomings, our failures, our selfishness to you. And as we seek, Lord, more and more by your spirit within us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, to put on this new life that you have graciously called us to and given to us. And Lord, there, it is there that we will find the joy, the hope, the, the peace, the contentment, the excitement that comes living out. Father, speak to our hearts whatever needs to be said and help us to be faithful, to trust you, to obey you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand together as we prepare to sing our closing song this morning? And I don't know how you need to respond to this message in particular. I know what God is saying to my own heart. I don't know what he's saying to yours, but if you would want to talk to somebody or just have me pray with you, I'd be more than glad to do that right now. Maybe there's somebody here in person, or maybe you're watching, listening online, and you've never yet taken that step of trusting Jesus to be your Savior. I want to tell you, you can do that 
right now. You can call upon his name. You can confess your sin to him. You can receive his forgiveness. You can trust in him and, and ask him to come in and take over your life. And you can be saved today. I'd love to talk with you more about what that life looks like, what it means. Well, as we sing, you respond as the Lord leads you to. so much for being here today, for your attention and uh, engagement in our time together in worship. I trust that as you go, you'll be well, safe, and healthy, and continue praying for those that are struggling in various ways. And be reminded, even as the psalmist prayed, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He is able to do that. He will, wants to do it, and he will do it. Should you call out to him for help. God bless you.